Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 26 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. On this week's show we are excited to have as our special guest Saram Krishnan. Saram is the SVP of product and partnerships and marketing at Headspin and he was previously the head of international growth at Tinder, the head of new markets at Spotify. Saram has started, scaled and sold technology companies and is an active angel investor. Hi Saram and Dave, a warm welcome to you both. It's exciting to have you both on the Australia show this week. It's great to be back. Lovely, lovely to be here. In this week's show, we are talking about mobile and digital transformation and what this means for enterprises now and in the next five years. So I guess this one's over to you then, Dave. Yeah, I'd be interested in our guest's uh, opinion on this. I mean, digital transformation kind of is a really hot topic. I, I uh, you know, talk about it weekly with my clients and ultimately, you know, we're looking at the market and what it's currently doing, you know, kind of where digital transformation kind of fits in the whole, you know, uh, DevOps, cloud, IoT, you know, everything else that's going on today. And ultimately, you know, where should the bets be placed in terms of where the marketing is going? So let, let's chat about that. Absolutely. So to start things off, um, I think back in the day, if you if you remember, there used to be when the when the internet was pretty new, there used to be at least in the past 15, 12 to fifteen years, a uh, focus on making the most of the internet, whatever that means, right? So the early digital transformation of the of of of, of the of the late nineties or the early two thousands was basically how do we replicate whatever we're doing offline online? So I would say that's V one of digital transformation, even though it's sort of a uh, it wasn't really digital transformation per se. But if you look at in the past five to eight years since the evolution of the mobile phone from obviously the Nokias to the iPhone, um, the Samsungs, what has happened is it's now even more imperative that enterprises not only have a, di a, a solid digital presence, but also a solid mobile presence. So a lot of what is happening today is, is enterprises trying to keep up with the uh, with the shifting user behaviors, uh, end user behaviors. That is uh, the, the the availability of twenty four seven media through mobile, the, the the constant usage of of mobile apps and mobile phones wherever they are. So enterprises are generally um, uh, certain enterprises are, are generally adept at at, at at catering to this sort of emerge, emerging trends, but most aren't. So it's very interesting to see how uh, how this develops. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, it's about making a business case, you know, for this going forward. And so I have lots of clients that are really willing to try anything and everything coming down the pipe, you know, as long as they add value to their bottom line or less potentially value to the bottom line. Some clients that are waiting for the first 100 people to do it. And so what would be the compelling business case that I would use to explain to clients that they need to really kind of look at this technology enablement? Yeah, I think I think at a high level you can look at it from two or three different lenses, right? The first lens is uh, from an engagement perspective. Um, are your customers engaging with you through um, offline or online media? Now, if if and, and and what aspects of this engagement can be digitized, right? So this is when savvy product decision making will have to come in. You'll have to figure out and sort of compartmentalize every touch point the consumer has with you, every piece of engagement the consumer has with you, and figure out whether it makes sense uh, if, if that particular engagement is then digitized, whether it's in the form of online or mobile, obviously remains to be seen. The second lens in which you, one can see this is whether or not mobile or sort of digital, like digital is, 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 a, is a frontier for new, frontier for growth. Right, because uh, is another growth channel. If you look at e-commerce, uh, mobile is an established channel. Uh, if you look at if you look at uh, Amazon, Walmart, everyone uh, is is everyone has an established um, um, uh, online channel. Banks have an established uh, uh, e-channel. Uh, now for them, it may not be an acquisition play; it's more of an engagement play. So um, one has to figure out whether um, whether whether the whether the channels are acquisitive in nature or, or, or sort of more engagement driven in nature to decide whether it makes sense to, to sort of maximize, maximize the, the digital channels. 
So what would be ultimately the, uh, you know, kind of like a five-year outlook for this technology? So this is going to be mandatory for lots of enterprises that are looking to, uh, in essence, kind of disrupt their market, become digitally enabled in the market, and really kind of use the next generation of technology to enable their market to be much better than it is, you know, a la you know, Uber and Netflix and, you know, all that kind of core, you know, um, uh, poster, poster kids in terms of how this stuff works. And so... Now, let's say we get in the time machine, go forward five years. You know, what are we looking at in terms of uh, how people are going to leverage this technology? Yeah, I think it's going to be a matter of sink or swim. If you look at co companies, have to be. Uh, uh, I mean, there's there's a there's a there's a mad rush for enterprises within uh, insurance, even within uh, mining, uh, to adopt uh, new IoT or new uh, digital uh, 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 processes. Uh, I, I think. The ones that do not adapt. Um, I mean, again, there, there's so many there's so many ways to look at this, right? I mean, you look at AI uh, as a as a sort of a, as a theme in itself. Um, like, like, there's an opportunity to like there's an opportunity to use AI as a as a as a precision tool versus a blunt object. So most CIOs I've spoken to uh, demand that AI be used in the enterprises, right, in the CIO organization or the or the engineering organization. Uh, but but it, it's it, it's not as easy as that, right? I mean, these are several tools that are like AI is one example of how with with you could use it as a precision tool, but not as a blunt object. So anyway, that's just one example. There's also IoT. There's also uh, how do you make sure your mobile uh, touch point is more engaging? So my, my, what I think is going to happen in the next five years is large enterprises have to adapt and and try to understand across like at which point across the value chain. Does does these technological sort of um, uh, innovation can fit in, and not think about it in a carte blanche perspective? Like I want this, I want that. But more importantly, figure out ex at, at which point does it makes does it make the most sense to to utilize. So uh, I, I think it's a sink or swim. I think uh, I've seen insurance companies, bank companies, mining companies uh, adapt, and in the next five years, if they don't, then I expect. Uh, a lot of disruption from smaller players or uh, more nimble larger enterprises that have adopted to uh, the, late, the the digital trends. Now, again, taking a step back, there's so many ways you can do this. I've seen firsthand how large insurance companies have set up, and, and this is an interesting fodder for conversation we can have. Like, how do you actually go ahead and implement so something like this? Well, I've seen large insurance companies incubate startups uh, in the valley or in Israel. Uh, that's outside of the general organization that enables them to act freely and think freely. So there's so many ways of making this happen. Happy to discuss that. Good. Hey, Brad, what do you think the impact's going to be in Australia with this technology? Do you think they're going to adopt any differently than the uh, uh, European countries or in the United States? No, it's funny you say that. I was in Australia last week uh, for, at a conference in Brisbane uh, speaking uh, at a fireside chat, and I was asked the same question. Australia reminds me, and forgive me for saying this, and I've lived in Australia, and my sister's in Australia, I feel like I, I, can, I, feel like I can say this. Australia, I feel like Australia is, is one of these markets where, um, it reminds me of Sweden, and I used to study and, and work in Sweden. Um, Sweden is, is very small, so by design, whatever they produce has to, must, must be regional in nature, right? So Australia reminds me of Sweden in a way. It has a very small market, large land size obviously but but it's not doing enough on the on the on the on the on the, on the supplier side of, of te technological innovation or the creation side of technological innovation um, especially when you have adjacent markets like southeast asia that has 600 million people obviously culturally similar to the us so i feel like australia is in a good position due to very highly educated workforce stable infrastructure to be able to be on the leading edge of, of digital transformation uh, I, I don't think it's happening uh, as much as we want to, to be honest. I think uh, Australian companies are, are generally more comfortable uh, dealing with local demand. And I, and I, again, I, I say this because I, I sort of have this global perspective, uh, but a lot more can be done. Uh, and I think if, 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 whether it's in the form of acquisitions, whether it's in the form of uh, creating smaller companies that operate independently, whether it's in the form of even expanding to R&D heavy centric or sort of tech heavy centers, I feel there's a lot more that Australian enterprises can can do to adapt to what's happening in the next five, six years. So Brad, let me get your thoughts on this. 
So, yeah, Saram, I completely agree with you. I think that Australia, you know, demographically is uh, small with regards to the technology market, although large in, in land size. Um, and also, when we do act or when Australia acts, and obviously I'm English, so I'm not Australian, but when, when Australia acts in, in, in the technology space, they tend to move, you know, pretty quickly and, and, and very much adapt to what the market conditions are. And I think you're, you're right in so many ways that they are regionally based and larger companies do sit back and as long as they are catering regionally and they're doing their job in that respect then there, there are no problems but there are a, a lot of te organizations in Australia that are embracing tech and, and Dave and I talk about this on a, a weekly basis with regards to uh, Australia seem to have the correct aptitude to adopt shiny objects quicker than others and, and make them work and I think that's one of the, the, the big attributes that Australia brings to the tech market um, so it's it's very interesting how, how it pans out. Who knows what the next four or five years are going to look like. Um, there was a recent survey actually. Uh, there's over 3,500 business leaders that were actually um, quizzed around the world as far as I'm aware. And 45% of them felt that their organizations may become outdated in the next five years due to the lack of embracing digital transformation. So there's a really quite a daunting figure that's, uh, that's felt amongst business leaders. Yeah, there's one thing that we shouldn't conflate here is uh, I completely agree with you. There, from I think from a consumer perspective, Australians have generally been very, very early adopters, similar to the Swedes. Uh, you're forced to because obviously small country, you're sort of leading on international influences and, and, and trends for sort of consumer adoption. On the enterprise side, obviously, uh, I mean, Australia's got a very strong banking sector, mining sector, retail sector is very, very well established. Uh, I feel like generally, for the most part, retail and banking have always been on the cutting edge globally as far as digital transformation because they're forced to. Uh, consumers are moving to the mobile as a touch point and they're sort of moving there with them. Uh, I think mining, uh, I, mean, I mean, Australia is obviously very known, well known for mining and, and I, my guess is it's on the cutting edge. Uh, but there's obviously room for um, other sort of laggage within the industry to, to overcome. So, I mean, I think... Uh, I think there's there, there's an opportunity for the rest to keep up. I think uh, retail and banking are competitive by nature, so one they're forced to sort of keep up. But but uh, there's there's certainly an opportunity for others to catch on. Absolutely, uh, Dave. Do you have anything further to add? No, I think it was a great summary. I see. Ultimately, this is something that everybody needs to look at. I mean, Australia included. And so if you're not being a participant in this technology, you're just really going to die the death of a thousand cuts. I mean, you do a lot of presentations around how the Global 2000 is going to be changing in the next 10 years. A lot of the kind of brand names we have out there that we always trusted are just going to fall by the wayside. You're going to end up being bought by other, other competitors because they're missing the boat on this technology. They're not being innovative enough. So this is not only, uh, you know, table stakes to continue your business. This is table stakes to be in your market. And what, what, what is exciting, what, what excites you right now? Um, just, I mean, at a high level, are there any particular themes that, that excite the both of you? I, I think I'll, I'll take it first and I'll let Brad, I'll let Brad answer. I mean, what excites me now is really kind of people thinking very differently about leveraging technology for their end state. So the ability to, you know, deal with uh, customer interfaces so customers can, you know, automatically order you know, prescription drugs, you know, kind of based on how it's communicating with some IoT based pill dispenser that's in their kitchen. Uh, the ability to, um, you know, basically monitor and uh, um, provide uh, insurance benefits for people who are, are providing better uh, health practices for their own personal lives by wearing fitness watches and things like that that are monitoring blood pressure and activity. And, and the more they work out, the more their insurance goes down. I think those sorts of things are innovative kind of game changers that are going to kind of lead us into the next generation stuff. And it's good for the it's it's good for the changes. I mean, people worry about uh, privacy in some instances. We have to be concerned about that. But at the end of the day, we're thinking how can we delight the customers to allow them to be uh, more um, participatory within their existing markets and be able to enable our business to be better at what we do, which is really going to enable them to kind of take things to the next level. And I think that kind of cha change in thinking is starting to become systemic in the Global 2000 out there. It has to be, and not as many, but it really needs to be something that we're thinking about all the time. Brad, what do you think? 
I'll second everything you've just said, and I think at a, a higher level, the, the connectivity between the IoT and that, you know, the human race, as it were, and how technology can support the human race in a, a pre a predictive state of uh, the world we're moving to, where the, the information technology is second guessing our needs based on our heart rate is, is fascinating. But if I take it back a few, a few levels, if I may, to you know, the smaller SMEs that are embracing just having an app and being able to engage with a customer in an app in a way, taking the, the customer experience from the, you know, the uh, small you know, um, to medium-sized business on the high street um, into an app environment and being able to continue that, that customer experience. I think that's, although for, for bigger corporations, that's uh, you know, maybe at least three years ago, you know, for smaller enterprises, it's something where the dynamics are very real. It's, it's very new for them. Um, so where they can uh, engage with people via an app and still have the continuity of their business. I think that's still very exciting for them. Um, the, the IoT for them might come down the line maybe in another two or three years, but I think they're, on, they're definitely embracing the journey uh, and looking to develop their own uh, branding within the app market. So even at Hitspin, uh, and Hitspin um, what we do is we help uh, enterprises build quality mobile apps. We've also seen that a lot of uh, enterprises want to be more like the Facebooks and the Googles of the world. Uh, and obviously, I mean, the Facebook, Google, Uber, Twitters of the world have sort of perfected the, the way to engage and to prioritize customer experience, right? Uh, everything is faster, everything is more engaging, uh, for better or for worse. And, and enterprises uh, uh, are trying to, whether it's in the form of DevOps, CI, CD, whether it's in the form of um, making sure that the release cycle is shorter, uh, basically are trying to keep up with this. And I think that's a good start, uh, trying to emulate the best, in, the best of the best uh, it, it's certainly a good way to, 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 to get the ball going. Yeah, exactly. Well, guys, look, thanks for a wonderful Australia show this week. It's been fantastic having you on. Uh, thanks, Dave, as always. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Siren, for being our special guest this week. It's been great. No problem. Thank you both. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show about digital transformation in the next five years. You can catch us all on Twitter, and the links will be below in the description box. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on future shows. Thanks again for watching, everyone.